In the past, I've covered several patents that showed ongoing work at AMD to create a chiplet-based GPU. A recent patent assigned to AMD adds another piece to the chiplet's GPU puzzle. As GPUs are becoming more complex and modular, the line between CPU and GPU is blurring, and as such, chiplet's GPUs seem inevitable. This new patent addresses one of the key problems that a chiplet's GPU for gaming would face latency from memory access accesses and the associated energy costs from moving data around. If AMD cracks the GPU chiplet's problem, they could leapfrog competitors like Nvidia and release a scalable GPU that could truly disrupt the market. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you are planning to build your own PC, then you really shouldn't waste money on a full price Windows key. Instead, you should get a no yam key. What is a no yam key? These keys are bought in bulk at a massive discount, usually by system integrators or by companies like URCDKeys. Instead of the full price of $200 for a Windows 11 Pro key when you buy directly from Microsoft, you can instead get a Windows 11 Pro open. OEM key for just over $15 when you use my coupon code C25 over at urcdkeys.com. You can buy with PayPal or with a credit card and after purchasing, head to your purchased orders page and copy your key. Then in Windows, type activate and enter your copied key into the designated field that set your Windows is now activated. You can also get Office 2021 Professional at a massive discount using the same C25 code. Code. Check the links in the description to get your Windows OEM keys today. One thing that threw me off when I first found this pattern a couple of days ago is the fact that the drawings show CPUs accessing memory rather than GPU processors. But because AMD has recently been publishing a bunch of patents that relate to GPUs, where they reference distributed rendering and dividing graphics workloads across multiple chiplets, I decided to take some time to study the patent in detail, and I'm convinced that the application that AMD has in mind for this will be applicable to GPUs. So the basic idea here is the introduction of a smart switch that sits between the processing dice and the memory blocks. In simple terms, if the memory is close, the switch is bypassed. If the memory is further away, then the switch is used to orchestrate memory accesses. In AMD's MI350 data center and AI GPU, we already find advanced 3D packaging and vertically stacked chiplets. The XCD or accelerator complex die is stacked on top of the I.O. die, as shown in this slide from AMD. Then these connect in a 2.5D integration with the adjacent HBM stacks of memory. Now we know that we won't be seeing HBM on consumer GPUs again. This type of memory never managed to commoditize, so it's just not financially viable for consumer products. In this new pattern from AMD, we see here on the left a processing element with a bunch of CPUs that share cache. Like I said, ignore the fact that these are CPUs and just think of them as processors, which could be anything. So for instance, XCDs in CDNA or GCDs in RDNA, for example. Using GCDs as an example, you can see that each graphics chiplet has its own local caches, L1 and L2, and they could share L3 with other chiplets if AMD's recent products are any indication. When there's a memory call, this system tracks where data resides and schedules tasks to the chiplet that can access this data more efficiently. If you saw my past videos on this topic, you might remember how data movement requires a lot more energy than the actual operations. So you want to keep data movement to the minimum distances possible. You can then see this data fabric circuit with a switch in the middle here, and this is connected to this memory controller on the right. The idea of this data fabric circuit, which would be based on AMD's Infinity Fabric, is to connect or compute memory memory and I.O. elements. This pattern shows methods that would monitor data movement across this fabric. That is the key innovation here and the piece of the puzzle that was missing from a chiplet-based gaming GPU. So the goal of this system is to reduce cross-chiplet traffic. What's novel here is that if a chiplet needs data that resides on another chiplet, the system can migrate the task to the chiplet that has the data, or it can replicate the data locally. It decides which is more efficient, 
replicating the data or transferring the operation to another chiplet. In this other diagram, we see how this would work in a chiplet's package. So here, instead of just one processing element, you have N, meaning several chiplets with logic. And then these are connected to that data fabric circuit in the middle, which has the switch, and then that connects to a memory controller. And then these nodes or chiplets can access a set of memory elements. That's what's new in this image, also the memories. An interesting possibility here is that AMD could stack these memories on top of the logic ties, similar to what they've done with the 3D variants of Xen. So in addition to each chiplet having its own local cache memory, it also has access to shared memory pools. So in summary, a workload is divided into tasks, then the system analyzes which chiplet holds the data each task needs, and then tasks are assigned to the chiplet with the best data locality. If the data spreads across chiplets, then the system migrates either the data or the task, depending on cost-benefit. As a result, you get lower latency, and you save power because data isn't moving around as much, and you maximize throughput by keeping data and computation close together. With such a system, you could even have one chiplet doing one type of task, like ray tracing, while another chiplet is doing a different type of task, like vertex processing or shading, or assembling primitives or any other task. So this is the typical AMD 3D stack system, a side view that is. So here we see the logic chiplet, like an XCD or a GCD, here called digital device, stacked on top of the I.O., which contains the switch and the memory controllers. And then on top are the stacks of memory, like the 3D V-cache that we see in AMD's X3D CPUs, like the 9800X3D. So this is not new, it's the typical implementation that AMD has used. But in a somewhat related pattern, AMD talks about the introduction of bypass chiplets to improve design costs and heat management. This is an example. Here you see how the digital device, so that would be the logic chiplet, is moved to the side and is placed under a dummy die that's just there to transport heat to the cooling solution. So the stacked memory is actually offset to the side and placed on top of a bypass chiplet, here marked as 416. The earlier patent introduces a system that analyzes which chiplet holds the data each task needs then tasks are assigned to the chiplet with the best data locality. And this patent looks to solve the fabrication costs of through vias and also the heat management of 3D stacking. So a chiplet space consumer GPU is actually realistic from both a cost perspective and a latency perspective when you combine these patents, along with the other ones that I've covered in the last few years. But as I'm sure you know, not all patents materialize in actual products. And even if they do, many end up being restricted to the data center products because latency isn't as important there, and that is usually the case with chiplets. Well, while that's true, AMD has already confirmed that going forward they are unifying their GPU consumer and data center GPU architectures. So there's only one architecture going forward. AMD is calling this new architecture UDNA, or Unified DNA, which merges RDNA and CDNA. DNA, obviously. That means that if the data center products are chiplet space, then it's likely that the consumer equivalents from the same architecture are also chiplet based. That's the strategy that we've seen with Xen, where the consumer chiplets are the same used in the data center Epic products but in a different package. That's the whole point of chiplets being scalable. Recent reports also point to there being a significant improvement in ray tracing performance in UDNA, or UDNA5 as some are calling it. Well, where could a big improvement in ray tracing come from? If you think about the division of tasks that I talked about in the first patent we looked at, it stands to reason that a chiplet-based GPU could allocate the ray tracing operations to a separate chiplet, while in parallel having another chiplet work on the other tasks. Several years ago, AMD introduced this concept of a Super SIMD, which is basically this idea of having tasks running in parallel without having to queue memory calls. This data fabric circuit enables that. Related to this patent is also the introduction of WaveGroup in UDNA, which is a reworked threading and execution model. In short, it's a way to group wave fronts in a SIMD, so you get improved parallelism. So when you piece everything 
everything together, when you connect all the dots, I think it's highly likely that AMD will be releasing a chiplet-based GPU for gaming next year. The patterns show that that's what they've been chasing, and the unification of data center and consumer architectures heavily points in that direction. If you'd like to get into a more in-depth technical discussion of these patterns, then I'll be on the Cortex Discord server, and all Patreon members have exclusive access to that. New patterns are emerging every month from AMD, and it seems to me that more and more pieces of the puzzle are being revealed for AMD's inevitable chiplet-based GPU, one that could also feature 3D stack memory. If you can't beat Nvidia through old-school brute force by making gigantic dies on the latest nodes, then and being the first to a proper chiplets gaming GPU with multiple logic dice is the way to beat them. Will we see a chiplet based UDNA or RDNA 5 GPU next year? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. By becoming a patron for just a couple of dollars per month, you get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. Share this video if you can, and if you're not already subscribed, do subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.